Building is closed on February 15th, 2019. We said yesterday's pattern was negative and futures were down sharply. We said what the bulls needed to do would be to take out this high and preferably this high promptly, ideally by gapping over it. <coughs> Otherwise, there were much lower targets. I did say that such a gap wasn't impossible because we had a wall into the close. Well, we traded as low in futures as 27.29, but nonetheless, we got the gap up we needed for the bulls to win once again. And when you gap down, gap is the wrong word. When you trade down that much and open in the black by this much, what happens is all the bears from overnight are trapped tends to lead to a good rally. And <clears throat> be aware that the same thing might happen in reverse over the weekend. If <coughs> we trade <coughs> up smartly, which I'm not predicting, and then give it all back and open in the red, which I'm not predicting, if that happens, it's a very negative pattern could lead to an all-day drop. Anyway, MJT says this move is false, gives us a target of 27.6653, most likely by Tuesday when the market reopens. That's my call, but don't forget if we gap up smartly, the calls kill before the open. <coughs> now, starting out with the low bar of the day, ending up with the high bar is a positive pattern. Almost always it leads to additional gains, but if we gap down instead, it tends to be big trouble. Rallying all day on a Friday is a positive pattern. Almost always it follows through <coughs> when the market reopens. But if it gaps down, it's typically big trouble. So what the market has to do when it reopens, and we should know before the open, is to keep going higher, ideally by gapping over this high. And if we gap down instead, which is possible, it's big trouble. Let's go over some of the indicators. <coughs> During the day, BJT, give a BJT plus three cell signal explained in my book. That worked. System said the move wouldn't stick. Now says the rally won't stick. That's the target. Just remember, if we gap up smartly, that's off the table. Now, with all these positive things, why is there a chance we could gap down? <coughs> well, for one thing, we got bar 13 of the DeMarc sequential cell for real with no early close. And you're also over this. TDST line, which is resistance. These things don't have to work and they've failed a lot. But when they work in spades, it tends to have three bars which drop smartly. Usually it'll drop smartly within three bars, ideally as soon as this prints. So at least it's a possibility. <coughs> Now, I'm not into <coughs> cycles as much as some other people are, but people who are into cycles like this 55-week cycle, and if you count 55 weeks from this high, you get this high right here, and it might be significant that when you count 55 days from this low to Tuesday's open, you get 55 days. I say I don't use that as much as some other people, but at least it's there. Now, we're trying to find the end of this wave. We haven't been able to call it yet. We have possibility of going over 2,800, but there are a number of plausible stops along the way. This is one of them. We have wave four in the here, but it could just as easily end here without changing anything. This could be A. And if you take a one by one GAN fan line, you'll see it hits today's high, just as the one by one 
gam fan from the wave three I call this I a one by one fan gam fan from this alternate low is hitting here. Usually when you run up to it like this, you either gap over it or that holds. So if we don't gap up, we should move down. Now as far as this move is concerned, I'm not happy with the count and I'm not certain that's the end of this move. I can come up with a few ways to count it. <coughs> this is the count I've been using and I have the blue count a, B, and then an ending diagonal triangle. It looks a bit forced, but if it's right, we should drop right from the open. It's possible the alternate counts right, because that's A, that's C. You can have an A and have a B, and have this C, which looks less forced. That might be the right count, but again, it's depending upon this high holding. <coughs> now, this move down here is a wall. We have a hole in the wall gap. These things fill in the majority of the times, not every time. They fill promptly. The target is to undercut the low of the wall and find support there. So if we do gap down, the target's in the 2740s. But if it doesn't fill by Wednesday's open, it doesn't have to fill anytime soon. That's the most common time, but if it doesn't fill then, it could be weeks, months later. So we're at a critical junction. <coughs> we have signals. We have a lower target. All the bulls need to do is to show this last move up, closing near the high of the day, wasn't a false move, by gapping up and taking out this high. Taking it out in futures won't help if it gives back the gain. It is suspicious that with five minutes left to trade, we were under this high. These moves in the last five minutes often are short covering or position squaring and are false, especially when they close at or this close to the high. If it's false, regardless of what happens in futures, we should gap down at Tuesday's open. And if we do, it's big trouble. And all we need to do to show this move isn't false is to gap up and continue rallying, which puts this number off the table. It does mean it won't print, but it means I'm no longer predicting it. So <coughs> the futures move has a possibility of being false, whether it's false or not. I think the open Tuesday will tell the story. We gap up, we've overcome resistance. But, but, keep it, but if we gap down smartly, particularly if we have traded much higher first, if that happens, which I can't predict one way or the other, if that happens, it's big trouble with much lower targets. And that's today's call.